Chapter 1. Magic Words Will Turn Your Life and Career Around One major reason many people fail at selling their ideas, products, or services is the fear of rejection. In some cases, this fear is nothing but your mind playing tricks on you. But more often than not, the rejection is real. And if you want to be successful in business, you will need to develop a rejection-proof approach. One great way to affect this is to use magic words that speak directly to the subconscious of your listeners. Our subconscious mind plays a vital role in our everyday decisions, and if you're able to find words that trigger the subconscious mind in your favor, then you will always have all you want. Many salespeople wonder why they deliver intelligent and outstanding presentations only to get little or no response from their audience. The real reason is that many of these salespeople fail to make their customers realize that they truly need what they have to deliver. Your presentation may be the best thing since sliced bread, but all you will get is a round of applause if you don't capture your audience at the subconscious or decision-making level. The simple way to get your audience to submit to you is up to your verbal communication. Words are powerful. Using the right words at the right time is like waving a magic wand you will instantly create the kind of response you want from your audience. This, of course, takes some learning and consistent practice, but the payoff is huge. Just imagine how your life, career, and business will change if more people easily buy into your ideas and offers. The worst time to think about the thing you are going to say is in the moment you are saying it. Phil M. Jones Does it sound like something you want? Great, let's learn some magic words you can start implementing today. Chapter 2. Make your contacts feel they are not alone and your conversion rate will scale up. Have you ever felt compelled to buy a drink you didn't plan on buying, but just had to because all the friends you hung out with purchased the same drink and couldn't stop saying good things about it? Or have you downloaded a mobile app simply by basing your judgment on the millions of reviews it has? That's human nature. We're more compelled to make decisions when we know that other people like us have made and benefited from making the same decisions. You can use this vital human trait to your sales advantage. Herd mentality is the idea that humans naturally gravitate toward things they see people around them doing. The next time you want to speak to someone about your product or service, use any of the following word combinations. I'm not sure if this is for you, but... Example, I'm not sure if this is for you, but... Would you happen to know someone who is going through or experiencing, insert the problem your business can solve, and who needs, insert the results of the service you're providing? Most people, example, most people in your shoes will quickly grab this product seeing its strange effectiveness and low price. I bet you're a bit like me. Use this particularly when talking to strangers. Starting your sentences with these words and including something the stranger probably loves doing will endear their heart to you, and they will pay better attention. People love speaking with fellas. They think they have something in common. Example, if you met your prospect at a fun park with their kids, you could say something like, I bet you're a bit like me. You work hard yet create time to hang out with family. They will feel appreciated, and an instant connection will be created because you were meticulous enough to notice little details about them. Did you know? Even plants respond to the power of words. Many trials show that when you speak negative words to plants and trees consistently, they will eventually die from too much negative energy. Chapter 3. 
narrow down people's options so they can easily choose what you want them to choose. When there are many options available, people will easily choose the option that keeps them from buying what you have to offer. But as a sales or business person, it is your responsibility to not just get people interested in your offer, but to get them through the final decision-making process. How do you do this? Subtly use words that polarize their choices, but do this with two things in mind. Firstly, don't make them feel pressured. The second is to do it in such a way as to project the importance of choosing your offer above rejecting it. An important tactic in sales is making the prospects feel you're helping them at a fraction of the cost. Examples of magic words that accomplish this are There are two kinds of people in this world. People instantly get edgy when they hear this. They will not only pay rapt attention to what you have to say next, they will want to show you they fall into the better of the two categories. For example, someone selling a personal development course could say, there are two kinds of people in this world, those who understand the importance of personal growth and take it seriously, and those who don't know what personal growth even means. What do you think the listener will do? You guessed right. They will want to show they understand what it means to develop oneself, and depending on the situation, that may compel them to buy the course. If I can, will you? Use this when the prospect insists you do something like reduce the price of the product. Example, if I can slash the price by 10%, will you make an order today? What do you know? This doesn't directly narrow their options, as in the case of polarizing, but you throw people off balance when they are arguing or claiming to know so much and you introduce a sentence that starts with, what do you know? Example, what do you know about how the oil industry works? Chapter 4. Use magic words to hook your prospects by showing them the possible future. Every decision is made twice. First, the possible outcomes are imagined in the mind to see if they're good before the actual decision is made. It's the reason the best adverts are the ones that trigger the imagination of prospects. Your job is completed once you can get someone to imagine a wonderful future with your product or service. You can use your words to make this happen. Following magic words like just imagine with the potential benefits of your offer works so well. Make sure you tailor it to the specific individual or group you're targeting. The more you understand your audience, the better you will get at doing this. Example, just imagine how great you will smell with this cologne. It works psychologically to attract attention and respect from anyone who perceives it. And guess what? It lasts all day. Try it and see. A second magic phrase that paints the future is if, then. This phrase is conditional, and that's what makes it super effective. It shows the result if your prospect takes the action you're speaking to them about. Example, if you allow me to redesign your website, then I am confident your monthly visitors and conversion rate will increase exponentially. For a decision to come true, you must have at least imagined yourself doing it. Phil M. Jones Chapter 5 Always make your prospects feel powerful and in control. People don't like feeling pressured to make instant decisions, yet that's how many salespeople unknowingly make prospects feel. And the result is rejection. Because no one wants to make a decision they will later regret, no matter how little. But it's time to turn the tables around. Hand over the power to your prospect, but do it in a way that enchants them to you, rather than chases them away from your offer. People buy emotionally, then use logic to justify the money spent. 
There are magic words to help you make prospects feel in control. You have three options. This statement alone makes your prospect feel he isn't being pushed while at the same time raising his curiosity. Follow the magic words with three carefully rehearsed options, making sure to present them in ascending order of significance, and let the option you want them to choose be the last you will mention. Could you do me a small favor? Who wouldn't? People love to help. It's a part of what makes us human. When you use this, you are sure to get a favorable response. The worst answer you could get will go like, it depends. Either way, you are sure to get a response to move you forward in your presentation. But after the response, what next? Ask them to do a little task like refer a friend or anything you really need help with. How would you feel if... Remember, people only make decisions that will benefit them in some way. Use these magic words to convey the potential benefits of your product or service. Example. How would you feel if you outsource those little distractions so you have time to be more productive doing those things that matter most to you? Chapter 6 Use magic words to put out the negativity of indecision. Sometimes, prospects become indecisive for reasons best known to them, and it becomes your duty to push further to see what happens next. However, you should understand that pressuring must not come to your mind the instant someone becomes indecisive. That will be a total turnoff. Instead, seek to understand or excite them. People like to feel heard and understood. When you seek to understand rather than pressure people to buy, it will almost certainly open them to you. Even if they truly aren't ready to buy at that moment, they will tell you the truth. And who knows, their opening up might just give you an idea of how to reach out to them next time. Successful salespeople know that pressuring prospects to open their wallets is not a sustainable approach. Use magic words like, what makes you say that? Or, when will be a good time to, in order to get them talking? As a second option, if the situation fits, use an exciting phrase like, the good news, to convey an interesting selling point. Example, the good news about getting this product early is the crazy early bird cash slash and free delivery. There is also a 100% money-back guarantee if you don't like the product after using it for two weeks.